A traditional drunkard's path quilt block can be pretty intimidating with all the little pieces and especially the curved piecing. But today I'm going to show you a super easy variation of drunkard's path block. Welcome to Eva's Studio. My name is Elizabeth and I help you make beautiful things with quilting, pojagi, and embroidery. So Drunkard's Path Quilt Block is a block that has a piece that's a square and then has a quarter circle in that square. And traditionally, this would be done with curved piecing. Today, I'm gonna to show you this non-traditional but easy variation of a Drunkard's Path Block. I've used two purple fabrics and two yellow fabrics on this white background, but of course you can play with any color combinations that you want. So let's get started with this super easy Drunkard's Path. To make this version of the Drunkard's Path quilt block, you're gonna need four seven inch squares of background fabric. So I'm using this white, and then you're gonna need four five inch squares of whatever color you want the inside curve to be. So I'm gonna be using two purple fabrics and two um, yellow fabrics, but of course you can use whatever color combination you want. And then you're going to need um, some fusible web. And on this, you're gonna trace a five inch circle. And it doesn't have to be exactly five inches. So I found this bowl and it was about four and seven eighths of an inches, so that is close enough, but it should be around five inches and certainly no larger than five and a half inches. And then you're gonna take these pieces and they've been roughly cut out on the fusible and then fuse them onto the fabric and then you're gonna cut out the circles. So now I have these circles cut out and I'm gonna applicate these onto these background squares. So to align everything, I'm just gonna fold the squares in half and gently finger press. We don't wanna put in a firm crease, but we just wanna kind of mark the center. So it should be a really light fold. We want it to come out easily. And then on the circles, we're gonna do the same thing, just that the edges, when you fold it in half, kind of pinch the edges so that you can see um, the four marks. And then you can use those four marks that you have to align to those folds so that you can have this centered. And then um, we'll peel off the back paper and I should have peeled the paper off before I aligned it. I will align it again and um, if you're nervous you can double check with the ruler to make sure it's in the same amount but if it's a little bit off that's going to be fine for this block. So then I'm going to fuse these onto the background squares using the directions for the fusible web that I have. So now that the circles have been fused on, I'm going to take these squares and I'm going to cut them into quarters and they should be three and a half inch squares. So you could try this with other applique techniques. However, I would hesitate from using needle turn applique and that's just because in this step, we're going to be cutting and I'm not sure how the seams in needle turn applique would hold up to being cut, but you're welcome to try this with other techniques. So now I've cut these into quarters. I'll have 16 three and a half inch squares. So I'm gonna lay these out in a four by four layout to get my finished 12 inch block. Now there are a lot of different um, layouts and variations you can do. So I'm going to show you one, but you can um, feel free to play around and come up with your own layout. So 
So this is the layout that I'm going to be doing. And I just have these kind of uh, random paths going across on a diagonal. So I know this is not the traditional Drunkard's Path layout, but I really like this one and with the colors that I've used. And so this is the one I'm going to be going with. So feel free to play around with your shapes that you have and come up with your own designs because that's the fun part of quilting is to be able to um, design and make your own thing or also you're totally welcome to copy this one. So now I'm just going to stitch these pieces together into rows and then join the rows together and that will complete my block. When you're joining the squares into rows, press the seams in opposite directions. And so on this row, all my seams are pressed in this direction. And on this row, my seams are pressed in this direction. And then when I go to join them, it's easier to get the seams to line up because they butt into each other. And so I can feel with my fingers that everything is lined up nicely. So here's the finished block. Now, depending on what type of fusible web you use, you probably will want to add some kind of stitching along the edge of those curves just to hold it down. And if you're going to be doing this on machine, you might choose to do this even before you put the squares together, um, do the stitching on the individual squares. However, I'm going to be doing some hand stitching embellishment, so I decided to wait till it was all together. So again, it's going to be your choice of how you want to finish the edges on that. Uh, but no matter what way you do it, I'm sure you're going to enjoy this fun block. For more fun quilting blocks and other tutorials, be sure to check out my website, ebitastudio.com.